Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll go over some of the tools that I think you're going to need if you're doing your own car repairs. I'm not talking about wrenches, sockets, or even screwdrivers. I'm talking about a scan tool, a multimeter, and one of these. Almost everything you do on a vehicle involves some sort of electrical testing, and having the right tool makes a big difference. If you have any electrical problems, you're going to need a multimeter. It doesn't have to be an expensive multimeter. It just has to read voltage, current, and resistance. But that's okay because most of them do, and they're not very expensive. A scan tool is going to be a much better option than a code reader. This will help you diagnose problems. They're also not much more expensive. This is the PowerCheck Circuit Tester by Anova. There's many different versions of this tool on Amazon. They all supply power and ground and they activate components like lights and fans. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use these tools in real world diagnostic situations and which tools I own and use all the time. By the way, this isn't a sponsored video. I'm only showing you these tools to help you out. That's what this channel is all about. It's helping each other save money on car repairs. If you find something in this video helpful, please like my video, help me grow, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe. Thanks for your support. I'm going to start with the PowerCheck Circuit Tester. This is probably the easiest one to use and the most fun. This tool hooks to your vehicle's battery and becomes part of the vehicle's electrical system. Its cord is long enough that it allows you to work from bumper to bumper and perform various tests all around the vehicle. When you're working inside the vehicle, it has an accessory port adapter with a six foot cord. This is a much better option than the tool I've been using with a 20 foot cord. What I think sets this tool apart from all the other probes out there is the way the head swivels. This makes it easy to get into different areas and still see the screen. It can also supply different voltages. It has a three volt scale and a five volt scale for sensor testing. The 12 volt scale is great for testing many of the other components like lights and fans. If you have a vehicle that requires six or 24 volts, this tool will work on those vehicles also. Now let me show you how this tool is used. Now I'm gonna use this tool to do some heavy duty diagnostics. I'm gonna check the condenser fan, all the wiring, the control head, and the fuses right here at the relay ports. I took out both the relays, and now we're gonna check everything at the terminals. So two of these should have power. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. Two of these should be grounded. This one's grounded and this one's not. So this one is most likely coming from the AC switch. So let me go turn this on and let's see if it beeps. There you go. So that's the control head and it's working fine. So the only other thing I need to do is power this one up and the condenser fan should come on. There it is. That's how powerful this tool is. You can check everything right at the relay. Now let's go over multimeters. The main features that you're gonna use is voltage, resistance, and current. Make sure your meter has these features. Most meters do. You can get a meter for $50 all the way up to $500. However, for doing the basic checks, any meter is fine as long as it meets the specifications that I just mentioned. The Innova 3340 is a professional automotive digital multimeter. I saw this on Amazon for about $100. Now let me show you how meters are used in a real world situation. All right, so to do a parasitic draw test, 
I've got my meter here and we want to put it on the amp scale. So let's go ahead and turn it on and put it on the amp scale. Our leads, the black leads, going to go in common. And then our red lead is going to go in the amp mode. And then here's our leads right here. So we already have the battery cable off because I never connected it yet. And then here's a jumper wire. This is just a jumper wire. And we're going to take one end of the jumper wire, put it on the negative side of the post, and the other end on the terminal. Okay. And then we're going to take our leads and we're going to put one lead on this end and this lead on this end. And then if we look here, I have 126 milliamps. And then all I need to do is disconnect this ground wire. And then the current is going to flow through the meter and read my milliamps. And I want to see under 50 milliamps. If I see above 50 milliamps, then I have too much current draw and that's going to drain my battery overnight. So let's just make sure that's not going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and remove this. And there it is. So right now I have 670 milliamps and that's way too much. But the computer is going to shut everything down. It already did. Now it's at 400. And then once it shuts everything down, it shouldn't be over 50. So let's give it a minute and let's see where it ends up. There we go. So right now we're at 16. Let me get this closer so you can see it. So I have 16 milliamps and that's perfect. So I know I don't have a draw on my battery. So I can go ahead and hook this up and be done with my battery job. Let's talk about scanners. Basically, the more you pay, the more features you're going to get. I have this one. This one was about 30, 40 bucks. It'll read codes and it'll read some engine data. I actually made a whole video on this, which I'll link in the description. This other one, this is a launch. I've had this for many years. It's old, the cord's coming apart, but I keep it around in case somebody wants to borrow a scanner, I'll give them this one. It still works pretty good. And this is my most recent one. This is the ANOVA 5610. Whenever I'm doing some heavy diagnostics, this is the one I'll use. Let me show you how scanners are used in a real world situation. All right, so I've got my scanner hooked up. Here's my engine coolant temperature, 174. Uh, engine RPM, 789, 821. Vehicle speed, I'm going zero miles an hour right now. Let's look down here. TPS, 14.5%. EGR is at 0%. My fuel levels at 85%. So yeah, just a great way to see all your sensors. And then if I want to go look for diagnostic codes, I can go over to diagnostic codes. And right now I've got no diagnostic codes in the computer. Uh, I can look at different modules. I can look at to see which sensors are going on here. So there's our ABS. It's just a great way to be able to diagnose your vehicle. Without this, you really can't do much in the way of diagnosis. So 
get yourself a scanner. I hope you got something out of today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.